it's very important to have a proper access opening very important to have a straight line access to the apical foramen or to the first curvature otherwise you will have a limitation in the instrument movement and it might break any bending will break the instruments about the removal of the pulp hone is very important as we see here the diverge cavity that allows the excess a direct access to the canal orifices and the map at the floor of the pulp is very important to preserve this map these lines between the pulp orifices are very important because they will lead us to the orifices of each canal so why do we provide this straight axis to have best and better debridement of the entire canal space and reduce the risk of the instrument breakage and we can have it it give us it provide us with a straight entry to the canal orifice projection of the canal center line before starting any root canal we should take an x-ray a periapical x-ray is beneficial to know the number of the roots the number of the canal the presence of any lesion okay but to see or visualize the position of the pulp space in the tooth the bite wing x-ray is more better okay to estimate the position of the pulp chamber degree of chamber calcification number of the roots and canals and to approximately measure to estimate the canal length the third and the fourth a periapical x-ray can do that better than the bite wing you see here this is a periapical x-ray it really can help determine the length of the canal number of the canals number of the roots from where to start our excess cavity we have in the anterior teeth and the posterior teeth for the anterior teeth for aesthetic region it's better to start palatally or lingually on the posterior teeth the occlusal surface it's better to achieve a straight line angle you see removal or of all the restoration and the defective care is is it's a very important step removal of the unsupported enamel is important too to have a diverged canal then we should prepare the cavity in a way that to have a straight uh, line for the uh, oh yeah for the passage or the entry of the root canal instruments An inspection of the pulp chamber wall and the floor with the prop is important tapering the cavity wall and evaluation of a space adequate for the coronal seal coronal seal is a very important step okay for the success of root canal here you can see it's uh, clear we have uh, three pictures first picture is for the lower molar and the excess cavity for the lower molar a diverge no undercut providing a straight line and in the middle it's the proper cavity on the first picture on the right side is for a cavity but the cavity does not provide a straight line angle because of the presence of of shoulder here or the removal of the shoulder in the picture the middle one shows you that 
it provide a clear access medially and distally in the instrument during working. In the mechanical phase of the cavity preparation to prepare an excess cavity we need equipment, magnification and illumination, we need handpiece, burrs, explorer, spoon, ultrasonic tip. An illumination is important, magnification using microscope or loops is so needed. The handpiece, we have slow speed handpiece and turbine. Really, I prefer the slow speed handpiece. Well, you can explore all the, and excavate the caries near the, the pulp, and then, uh, and then, removal of the pulp tissue. For the bears that are used in root canal treatment, we have the round bear with a long shank, which is about 13-16 millimeter long. They are number four, number six. They are used to remove the roof of the pulp chamber and you can excavate even the pulp horn tissues. Once you reach, you finish that step, then the non-cutting end fissure bears. If they are diamond or uh, carbide bear, they are to provide the diverse cavity, remove all the unsupported animal, as we mentioned before. Once the receded pulp chamber and calcified orifices are identified, okay, the cutting instruments like those we have the miller bear again they are with hard long shank these burrs are important after locating uh, the pulp chamber the extendo bear the miller bear l n bear just to widen the orifice canal and endodontic explorers are needed to determine the Orifices. The narrow one is used to determine the calcified orifices. This spoon is really needed to to extirpate the pulp horn, the content if it is necrotic or no. Ultrasound tools also needed. Here we see how you can prop the procedure for the excess opening. As we mentioned, for the anterior teeth, we will start palatally or lingually. So the interest is always gained through the lingual surface of all anterior teeth for aesthetic reason. The initial penetration is prepared in exact center of the tooth above the cingulum. The pair position should be perpendicular to the tooth surface. After the entry to the enamel is done, with a round burr number four. Then you reach the dentine, removal of the dentinal tissue till a limit where you feel that the burr is dropped. Okay, there's some special feeling that the burr is dropped from your hand to an empty cavity. So then you should know that you are in the pulp. Okay, you can increase the size of the of your cavity diverge it and then change the direction of your cutting to be parallel with the tooth with the long axis of the tooth otherwise if you continue with the first direction you started with you will end to perforate the labial surface remove the roof of the pulp chamber by working from inside of the pulp toward the outside in a pulling motion okay so you will clear all the present shoulders then don't ever forget the lingual shoulder should be removed to provide the stressed uh, line uh, for the instruments then finishing funneling with a fissure bear 
final shape funnel down to the office of the canal and flare to the outside. The widest diameter of the cavity should be at the occlusal side. Okay. Extirpate the pulp by introducing an instrument like a barber de broche. Once you introduce it into the office of the canal, then it, the tissue will be uh, attached to it and will stuck to it then rem and take it in outward motion so you will remove the pulp tissue. After that an irrigation should be done to the pulp chamber. The pulp horn should be eliminated with a round bell. Number two, use in lateral, use laterally and incisally because if a tissue remains a necrotic tissue, it will cause discoloration for the anterior teeth. Cause uh, discoloration. Here again, it can show you that the removal of this shoulder can provide a straight line to the cavity and this is the x-ray where for a tooth which is a lower anterior and the rotary endodontic instrument was broken inside because the excess cavity was not prepared enough to provide a straight line and straight line passage for the instruments now to start with a premolar for the upper premolar we draw exactly at the central fissure using a bear to penetrate once we reach the roof of the pulp we should remove the pulp horn with number two and number four round bell and don't ever forget that once you are drawing with a round bell when you feel that there is a drop in so this drop means that as I said once you remove the pulp chamber once you reach the roof then remove the content of the pulp chamber after that you can extend you can use the fissure bear the non-cutting end fissure bear to remove uh, to remove more from the walls you can draw buccally lingually because this is the shape of the pulp in the upper premolar okay so that the canals will be clear for you finish the cavity wall with a fissure bear and the final excess opening would be would be avoid in shape buccolingually okay and that will reflect the anatomy of the pulp chamber and the position of the buccal and the lingual canal orifices. Never, never touch the map. The pulp map is important. Pulp chamber for the lower premolar are a little bit buccally directed. Okay, toward buccal rather than the lingual. So when you start the excess opening, you should push your bear a little bit buccally. Excesses for the upper premolar, there are two canal buccal canal approaches more palata palatally. I mean, the excess for your palatal canal should start from the buccal side, and the excess for your uh, buccal canal should start from the uh, opposite side to provide the straight line for your instrument. Again, I said that the floor of the pulp chamber should never be touched you should keep the lines that connect the orifices because they will show you the way to the orifice and as we mentioned the orifice or your drill for the first premolar lower and the second premolar should be a little bit buccally more than lingually and once you drill you should also after that extend your cavity once you you reach the pulp you should extend your cavity uh, buccal lingually uh, because this is the shape of the pulp 
to get the orifice of the canal and to have the funnel shape that provides the straight line into the canal. But once you reach the roof, you remove the roof. For the upper molar and the lower molar, this is the approach. Is It is a little bit measurely. These x-rays can show you that the periapical x-ray can tell you how many roots and how many canals you will have. And if there is a periapical changes, while the bite wing can tell you what is the shape of the pulp horn. Okay. These are the instruments I used starting from A, the round bar, and remember after reaching the pulp, the floor, the roof of the pulp, the, there some widening should be there. Okay, using the round bar, not to leave any shoulder, to have a straight line axis, then after removal of the content of the pulp, you can use the guts gilden burrs to uh, increase the width of the orifices. Lastly, is the fissure non-cutting end fissure bear to prepare the walls, okay, to be diverged toward the outside. Why? Definitely to. Some anomalies in the pulp cavity are expected due to the presence of some diseases. Okay, either you will have an calcified pulp, a small pulp, um, or open apices, and so on. Like uh, cases of uh, dentinogenesis imperfecta, there will be a small pulp and some obstructions on the roof canal, and uh, maybe there is no root canal at all. Maybe it's all calcified. Cases of hyperthyroidism, a patient with hyper, hyperthyroidism expect a calcified canal, loss of lamina dura in the x-ray. Patient with hypofunction in the pituitary gland, there is always a retardation in the eruption and mostly the apices of the teeth are open. Uh, cases of dentinal dysplasia there is some obliteration of the pulp chamber, the root formation defect too, shell teeth, the pulp chamber is quite big, okay, roots are short, cases of Dennis invaginations, there is an improper shape of the root canal. But during excess opening, errors can happen, like a perforation. Perforation either in the uh, in the lateral wall, perforation uh, toward the epic that in the after reaching the pulp, for example, because we dr you drill you drill in advance toward the apical side. Okay, so you might have perforations that can happen in old patients because they already have a lot of. Uh, tertiary dentine, reparative dentine, so. Uh, the pulp chamber is already small, okay. so it might end to perforation in the bifurcation area. In advanced cutting, you cut epically, you don't stop. Okay. Tooth restored with the crown on inlay or big restoration, it's very difficult to know their long axis. So it's better to remove the restoration and start. Tilted teeth can also, during the uh, drilling, you will lose, uh, you cannot feel their long axis. A failure to complete a convenient extension during drilling also can cause cutting more epically, especially with the molar teeth. You will end up with a bifurcation perforation and that will weaken the tooth structure. Uh, then uh, you will lose the funnel shape of the uh, of the cavity. Perforation and the bifurcation will happen, gauging that going laterally in the excess opening, so the wall of the cavity will not continue with the wall of the root canal. Here it's very difficult to control pulp extirpation. Narrow excess opening. 
if you open a narrow excess opening like here then you will you cannot complete the pulp extirpation some of the pulp tissue will be left behind and that will cause discoloration of the tooth and again remember if you have a pulp tissue remain in the pulp chamber there will be a severe bleeding always remember before starting with the orifices of the canal remove the whole pulp tissue for me i never stop cleaning the uh, pulp horn the chamber of the pulp unless there is no bleeding then i will understand uh, that there is no tissue left so bleeding is my detector whenever there is a bleeding so there is a pulp tissue left clean it then start detecting for the canals such a tissue if remains it will cause discoloration of the tooth anatomical landmark of the floor of the pulp which are convex floor the presence of these grooves that I tell I told you before I call them the map of the pulp they will lead me to the offices don't touch it don't don't use a sharp instrument once you reached the pulp horn try to use excavator if a proper placed in the pulp chamber okay and pulled against the wall and it catches the pulp chamber then it means that there is a still roof on the pulp chamber therefore indicating presence of the remnant of the pulp which means that I introduce a pulp and with the long axis I try to remove it if I catch something on the walls which means that not the the I need to widen and diverge more to get rid from uh, any remnant left beneath that two structure sometime because of the presence of a tilted uh, tooth etc tilted tooth or maybe yeah crowding or caries on the labial side so of maybe the proximal surface if the adjacent tooth is missing maybe there a dentist think about getting use of the proximal surface for the entrance to the pulp and that is wrong because it is not a straight line to the instrument here they might end up to a uh, ledge a uh, fracture instrument and there will always be a remnant of the pulp chamber there so they fail to uh, extirpate the full pulp tissue sometime overextended excess of the opening here this is also uh, misleading because if the wall of the canal are not continuous with the l wall with the borders of the root canal wall it uh, it will mislead the dentist first second it will weaken the tooth structure there will be undermine enamel wall this um, this shape can show you that how much is important to have a good excess cavity preparation it's in the wide base if you have an excellent cavity excess so which means that it's an indication for a good root canal a treatment and these are the references if you need to go back to them anyhow I will not mention the instruments because you already have taken it last year but I will write them in the note and you are responsible for them thank you